In this series of videos, we've been working through Turner Inc.'s cash flow statement. Uh, we earlier did the direct method for the operating section, and just the last video we worked on was the indirect method for the operating section. In this video, we're going to do the investing section. So let me scroll down to the investing section, and what we're trying to track in the investing section, remember, is the change in long-term assets. If we bought long-term assets or if we sold long-term assets, they belong in the investing section. So the real common long-term assets are like property, plant, and equipment, like land, buildings, and equipment. Uh, also, though, if the company bought and sold investments, like investments in other companies, then, then that would be tracked here as well if they were long-term in nature. Um, so let's take a look at this problem, and, and certainly equipment changed. It went from fifteen to 17000 and that's a real indicator that we bought some equipment. Now, as I scroll down, it actually says equipment was purchased for $6,000 cash. Well, that's great information for our, our uh, uh, cash flow statement to know that we bought six thousand dollars worth of equipment. But it went from fifteen to seventeen. That's not up by six thousand. And the reason is we also sold some equipment. Equipment with an original cost of four thousand and a cumulative amortization of five hundred was sold. So we got a purchase and a sell. But let's deal with the purchase first. We purchased equipment for six thousand dollars cash. All right. So I go into my equipment and I go negative six thousand. Right. We bought equipment. $6,000 cash went out. Whenever you see cash paid, it's a negative. Whenever you see cash received, it's a positive. Cash received on the sale of equipment. All right, we sold some equipment, and it doesn't give us very much information. It says equipment with the original cost of $4,000 and accumulated amortization of $500 was sold, but it actually doesn't tell us how much money we sold it for. But we can figure this out. Remember, whenever we sell equipment, I'm going to just make a pretend journal entry over we will credit the equipment for the amount and the amount was four thousand dollars that's the original cost we also get rid of its accumulated amortization and that was five hundred dollars and we're going to debit cash whenever we sell equipment for some amount i'll just put question mark for now i'll fill that in in a second but also when we sell equipment i want you to remember that we'll experience a gain or loss unless it's you know perfectly for uh, the book value which would be unusual so when we sold this equipment when i look at the income statement we experienced a loss of a thousand dollars so we lost a thousand dollars on the sale of our equipment and so when we sold it we would have gone debit loss on sale of equipment for a thousand bucks so this would be the full journal entry debit cash get rid of the equipment and then record a gain or loss. So we debited our cash, we got rid of the equipment and its amortization, accumulated amortization, and we recorded a loss. Now, how much cash did we receive? We can fill in the blank and we go, we got $2,500. There's also another way. You could look at this equipment, you could say the equipment was worth 4,005 minus 500, it was worth 3,500 on my books. I sold it and I lost a grand on the sale, so I must have got 2,500. Like you can kind of infer that, right? You can mentally or intuitively put that together. Anyway, we got $2,500 of cash on this sale, so let's record that. Uh, we didn't have any investments in our company, so at this point, we're done. And this is going to be a negative 3500 And this, of course, represents an outflow of cash. Cash went down as a result of our investing activities. I was going to split this into two videos, but why bother? Let's do the financing section now. So in the financing section, we're tracking changes in equity. I'm looking for uh, or actually changes in long-term liabilities as well as equity. So I'm looking for new loans or paying off of old loans. I'm also looking for share issues. And the final thing I'm looking for is dividends. So looks like well actually let's let's go through our, our template cash paid for reduction of bonds and long-term debt uh, we, in terms of payables we have only short-term liabilities in this company so there's no bonds or long-term debt but if we did issue bonds or long-term debt or repaid it we would uh, deal with them there uh, cash received on the issuance of shares so in terms of shares we did looks like we issued two thousand dollars of shares doesn't say if we issued them for cash, but I'm going to make that assumption. If it hasn't said we, we issued them for something else, I'm going to assume it was for cash. So we went up by $2,000 in common shares. Uh, that means that we went 
we got cash and we issued more common shares. Our equity went up. And again, when I look at my little cheat sheet at the top here, if shareholders' equity goes up, cash goes up. So my cash would have gone up by $2,000 as a result of this issuance of common shares. Uh, I'm going to assume we didn't redeem any common shares that didn't tell us otherwise. Last one, cash paid for dividends. This one's a little bit tricky. It does say that the company declared dividends during the year, but it doesn't say for how much. And if you look at your income statement and you look at your balance sheet, there's no dividends on there. There's dividends payable. But there's no actual dividend amount. And you got to ask yourself, well, where are the dividends? What statement are they on? And they're on the statement of shareholders' equity or, or the statement of retained earnings. And so what you need to do is you kind of need to prepare your own statement of retained earnings to figure out this amount. I'll quickly do it here in Excel. We'll do a quick statement of retained earnings for this company just on the side. Let me make my fonts a little bigger here. So our statement of retained earnings, remember what it tracks, and this is very rough. It tracks your beginning retained earnings. You add net income. You subtotal. You deduct dividends and you get your ending retained earnings. So let's see what we can do with our company. Our company's beginning retained earnings was on the balance sheet. The, the retained earnings at the beginning of 2012 is the same as at the end of 2011. It was 46,100. We're going to add net income. Our net income comes from the bottom of our income statement. It was 10 grand. We're going to subtotal. 56,100. We're going to deduct dividends. That we don't know, but we do know our ending retained earnings. And our ending retained earnings was uh, 51,600. So we can infer our dividends. We can figure out our dividends. Our dividends is just the difference between 56,1 and 51,6. The difference is 45, oops, 4,500. So that is the amount of our dividends. But we're not done. Cash paid for dividends. That's the amount of the dividends we declared. The fact that we have some dividends payable tells me that I might have paid more or less than what I declared. So we declared $4,500 in dividends in, in the year we promised to pay. Now the formula for cash paid for dividends is dividends plus decrease in dividends payable. So for our company, our dividend amount we just calculated, it was 4500 Our dividends payable went from 31 to 15 It went down by 1600 So there was a decrease of 1600 So that means we paid more than just what we declared this year because we reduced what we owed. So 4,500 plus 1,600 equals, I believe, 6,100. And sorry if this is uh, not visible. I hope you can see that. 4,500 plus 1,600. That's 6,100, and that's the amount we paid for dividends. Our company didn't have any other short-term debt or other liabilities, so at this point we can total up our financing section. And we show uh, $4,100 of outflow from financing activities. Now we want to know overall, by the way, I'll just note that that's an outflow. Uh, get rid of the word inflow. Now the final thing we want to know is, did our cash go up or down? And how might I know that? Well, I could look at the balance sheet of cash, but that's not what I want to do. I want to say, okay, our operations generated $16,200 in cash. Our investing activities, we bought 30, we spent $3,500 net on equipment. Our financing activities, we paid $4,100 out the door. So overall, $16,002 minus the $3,500 minus the $4,100. Overall, cash went up by $8,600 according to my uh, calculations here. Now there's a very easy way to check this. This is why I love accounting. You can double check a lot of your work. How will I know if cash went up by $8,600? I did all this work to figure that out. Did cash really go up by $8,600? Let's look on the balance sheet. 
Cash last year was 36,800. Cash this year, 45,400. Yes, from last year to this year, that looks to me, oh, what did I do? That looks to me like an $8,600 increase. Now, I don't know why that moved like that. Uh, anyway, you can see that that's an $8,600 increase. So, all we do at the bottom of our cash flow statement is we say, okay, what was our cash at the beginning of the year? January 1st, 2012. What was our cash at the end of the year? December 31st, 2012. Oops. And did it in fact increase by the amount we said it did? We've just said it went up by 8,600. Well, we'll double check it at the bottom. 368 to 45,4. And just a quick Excel will tell me that that minus that. Yeah, it changed by 8,600. Now, I, I don't actually put that amount in. You can just eyeball it and see that, yes, we've gone up by 8,600. All right, I'm going to stop recording here. Uh, in our next video, we're just going to do a bit of analysis on this, and we'll look at a real cash flow statement to see how it compares to our kind of made-up or simplified example. That's all for this video. One more to go.